Hello, everybody. This is a good time to uh, revisit an old uh, argument whether or not uh, deflate gate produced any real effects. My name is uh, John Lambropoulos. I'm a faculty member at the University of Rochester, where I teach courses in mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering, and material science. So the ball is a prolate spheroid, which weighs about uh, 400 grams, just under one pound. Two to two and a half percent of the mass of the ball is occupied by the air. So what happens if uh, the air of the ball is slightly removed? When the air is removed, the ball becomes a little bit softer, which means, therefore, that some of the energy that the coreback's fingers impart to the ball is actually absorbed by an elastic deformation on the surface of the ball, which means, therefore, that some of the energy that the coreback may provide is actually wasted in simply deforming the ball. As a result, the ball will likely be underthrown to some extent, but on the other hand, because the skin of the ball squeezes in a little bit, this will mean that uh, the moment of inertia of the ball itself will become smaller, therefore the torque provided by the quarterback's fingers will actually increase. So we have uh, two effects. One is uh, stabilization by increased uh, rotation rate. This is good. On the other hand, we have uh, reduction of uh, the energy that the ball can actually absorb. What will prevail is absolutely not clear. The only thing that's actually clear is that for somebody like Josh Allen, who probably practices anywhere from between 150 to 200 times per season, his body mechanics is so familiarized with a perfectly inflated ball that any deviation from that perfect pressure is likely to throw off his brain, body, arm, fingers, computer coordination, and therefore affect his play probably in an unpredictable way. Thank you very much.